Hello and welcome to the BSB season review. Uh, joining the two Michaels is me, the 2023 Bennett's British Superbike champion, Tommy Bridewell. Good, all right, well we've got a bit of a special one here. It's a season review, BSB show special. Tommy, thank you so much for inviting us to your house. My pleasure, you're always welcome. <laughs> thank you're always you. welcome. And you've got your nice display sorted out for us as well. well yeah, us, but... it looks like I've done it purposely, but no, it's, um, it's a nice reminder of uh, many years of hard work. So uh, trophies here, the helmet, the leather, Alpine Star leather suit, and the, the famous Alpine Star vest top. So um, yeah, it's... Uh, I think when racing's your life, everyone comes in and sees trophies and sees helmets in. Now, obviously, the, the, main, the main show of the house is, is the, the, the one I've been working for. So, yeah, finally. You come down for your breakfast every morning, it makes you put a smile on your face. Yes, it does that, yeah. Just takes a bit of polishing, but luckily my <laughs> wife's very good at that. So um, that's another, another pink job for her. <laughs> She's going to watch this. Exactly, yeah. So you just have to make sure the dogs don't take a leak on the air. Exactly, yeah, that would be it. Yeah, they'd be in the field <laughs> shot if that was the case. <laughs> yeah. Just got a few facts of the season. I think most people are going to know these already, but it's, it's nice to sort of remind ourselves. We're a couple of weeks out of, uh, you know, after, after Brands Hatch now. Obviously, the winning margin of half a point was the closest in the history of the championship which is phenomenal. I mean, everyone talks about that season where it was, what was it, point through a second. Mm -hmm. um, but there, half a point, never been yeah. closer. I think, was it uh, in World Superbikes was the same? Was it Biaggi and, I want to say Biaggi and Sykes? Did Biaggi win it by half a point? Oh, you might have done. I'm I sure it was you, from Sykes, though. Biaggi and, I'm sure Biaggi and someone, it, it, Biaggi won it by half a point, I'm sure. So I think that's probably the only time I can ever remember because obviously now, nowadays it's rare that they would ever award half, half a point, point, really, so yeah. But people screaming at the telly now, weren't they, and putting in the comments. Go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, feel free to comment if we're wrong, the chances are we are, or I am at least. You had a career best total of eight wins and ten further trips to the podium as well. Yeah. We you were did. waiting for me to chip in and say <laughs> nine wins. <laughs> yeah, actually, you it back, yeah, you? I did. No, uh, yeah, no, eight wins on paper. Let's say at least. And I want to say that uh, you finished in the top six in twenty-six of the thirty-three races, which is phenomenal. Yeah, I think to be honest, exactly that. The the, the way the season is now, consistency is key. Um, and you always know through the year that you you might get a mechanical issue, you might crash out of a race, you might get taken out of a race. Uh, so consistency is so key now, whether it's, I, I always I always refer almost a little bit to Cadwell. I won the last race um, and I felt amazing on the bike, but the first two races, I didn't feel very good on the bike uh, and I ended up fifth. And I knew them races, all I could do was finish fifth. Mm. Whereas a lot of riders, even me in, in my younger years, let's say, would have tried to have forced to have finished fourth, but probably crashed. So. Yeah, it's, uh, that's where the championship is, is also won and lost in them kind of races, really. I suppose experience and helps, doesn't it? Because you've, you've got to tell yourself, the, from the first lap of the first race, every single overtake I make, every single apex that I hit is going to... Is, and there's the evidence, half yeah, a point. It, it, crucial, crucial, exactly that. And I look back on the championship now and think, mm, I could have probably forced... Um, one extra position now you know Thruxton was was obviously very obviously terrible for us but uh, I ended up kind of accepting that we were diabolical um, we ended up I don't know 13th miles behind but I could probably have forced it and maybe finished a place or two places higher up in, in most of the races um, in hindsight now that goes to show how crucial them extra points, you know, perhaps could have been. But luckily for me, that's not the case. But yeah, it, I, I like to learn from everything. Um, and it's certainly now I look back and think, well, that half a point may be crucial. That one point, that, that five points, that whatever. So yeah, maximising on every, every opportunity. Because mm. actually, after the, over the first 12 races, I think you only won one of them. But you were still podiuming and getting yeah. big points. 
Yeah, when exactly. Yeah, Alton, Alton Park was the, the first win. Um, I think because, exactly, going back to, like I said, about Cadwell, Cadwell really, uh, didn't feel amazing on the bike. Well, I felt great on the bike, but I didn't feel I had quite that race winning. I almost feel like perhaps it was slightly hampered because it's Silverstone round one. Mm. I was sat behind Josh uh, and then it got red flagged. Um, it was me and Josh were sort of out front and I was just sat there waiting my time. Um, so that kind of win got took away. And I feel like, I feel like maybe even one of the other, uh, one of the earlier Alton Parks, I was sat there um, coming up through the pack and then it got red flagged. And I think Josh won that race as well. Uh, but yeah, wins or podiums is always, is always the key point of, you know, that's where the most points are generated. Do you feel like you've matured? Oh, yeah. This season? Look at me, I'm very <laughs> mature character. Well, I, I, I think I've kept yeah. saying to you all throughout the year that you just seem different this year. I don't, I, yeah. And I could not really put my finger on what it was, but you just seemed different. Just Probably a bit more mature. Yeah, well, yeah, I think, to be honest, it, it's, it's weird because I am a happy-go-lucky sort of character and I like to just enjoy racing at life. Hmm. Um, I like having fun. I like taking the mick out of people and, and, and like banter as such. But I think confidence for me was was key this year. That I I knew going with PBM that they've got eight British Championships. Uh, I've got a, a factory Ducati course technician. I've I knew in my contract there there was sort of a spec of the bike that I re required. Um, from Ducati course, so my bike was was always to that spec, and I knew with all of that, and I believe in the, the v, Ducati V4R, I believe in Ducati course. Um, there's no reason why I shouldn't have become British champion. And as soon as I got that first win, uh, it made life easier in this respects, and it was cool because when I won that race, and then I won other races under different circumstances, I kind of got the confidence of going well. I can win from the front, I can win from the back, I can win pulling through the pack. That confidence just grew and grew and grew um, to allow me to, yeah, like you say, mature and more so just self-belief. You know, it's so easy to doubt yourself, but yeah, self-belief is key. Should we just remind ourselves of the thriller that was Brands Hatch? We've got a highlights package, uh, which we can, so we can, we can look at the what happened in the three races. Yeah. Let's go and have a look at that. It was the bike social sprint race with three to go in 2023. Glenn Irwin had to start from 17th on the grid in a 12 lap affair at Brands Hatch GP. As the lights went out front pole, Jason O'Halloran on the McCams Yamaha got a lightning start to lead through turn one. Glenn Irwin was making good progress in the early stages going through here on Luke Mossy into Sterling. Kyle Ride was also going very well as Tommy Bridewell made a move on Leon Haslam. That pushed him wide and allowed Kyle Ride and Jack Kennedy through. There was a crash for Alex Olsen, unfortunately. That was the end of his uh, pathway ride here at Brands Hatch. Glenn Irwin then went through on both Peter Hickman and Charlie Nesbitt to get closer and closer to the front. And there were two moves and one as Kyle Ride went through to lead and Christian Eden made a brave move on Tommy Bridewell. Erwin then eventually got himself into the top five as he made the move on Nesbitt and then on Jack Kennedy as well. He'd already got past Leon Haslam at this stage. And guess who he faced? Right up ahead of him in third place on circuit, his rival for the season and teammate Tommy Bridewell who had a bit of a slide around Clark Kerr. The championship dream was ended for Leon Haslam, unfortunately, at Surtees, crashing out and pretty much ending his chances of victory. Charlie Nesbitt, unfortunately, tumbled as well in the closing stages. Out front, there was a lunge from Glenn, but it was just a bit too hot, and unfortunately, he ran wide. And in the closing stages, despite a really big push from O'Halloran, it was Carl Ride that hung on to a superb victory ahead of O'Halloran, with Tommy Bridewell finishing in third. Ten and a half in it, with two to play. The penultimate race of the 2023 season got underway with Jason O'Halloran starting from pole position on the new livery. And it was all to play for. Ten and a half points in the championship between Tommy Bridewell and Glenn Irwin as the lights went out.
The sun was shining at Brands, but it was a very chilly day and a fall early on for Tom Bidamos in his debut weekend in British Superbikes as they dropped down the hill. Glenn Irwin it was that got to the front and led from Kyle Ride and Jason O'Halloran. Ride then had a little look out front, but Glenn Irwin closed the door to hold on to his lead with Tommy Bridewell then moving himself up into fourth place. Jason O'Halloran then went through on Kyle Ride. Kyle Ride returned the favour on the approach to Druids. Bridewell closing in on the pair with Eden also ever present. Up the inside for Jason O'Halloran of Kyle Ride into Surtees. A packed crowd at Brands Hatch watching the thriller and the showdown here at Brands. There was a crash for Christian Eden and that brought out the safety car. Eden in some considerable pain. This was about halfway through and on the restart with Cole Ties, Jason Halloran cracked out and kissed goodbye to another championship opportunity going down at Surtees. Tommy Bridewell then pounced on Kyle Ride to move into second place to make it a PBM 1-2. And he got really close and personal over at the hairpin on more than a few occasions as the PBM garage, headed by Jordan, couldn't watch. Jordan then uh, watched on as her two boys got a decent advantage and then ultimately Glenn Irwin taking victory and taking it to the final race of the year. Five and a half between Glenn and Tommy with Kyle Ride 30 adrift. For the final race of the 2023 season, it was all to play for between three riders and the championship leader, Tommy Bridewell, started from pole position. But as lights went out, it was a great start for Ryan Vickers, who got the whole shot down into turn one at Paddock Hill Bend. A nasty high side for Franco, born on the opening lap, and that he was into a gravel trap. And soon, out front, Tommy Bridewell wrestled his way to the front as Glenn Irwin was pushing his way through from sixth. Kyle Ride got up to second and then challenged Bridewell for the lead. Much to the delight of Alan Gardner, Glenn Irwin then made sure that all of the right people were in the right places as they fought it out for the championship. A block pass down into Surtees meant that Tommy Bridewell was pushed back and a change in the championship lead went on and on and on. Eight in total over the course of the race. In the closing stages, Glenn was making a move on Kyle, trying to make things tricky. Tommy Bridewell went back through as well, making sure that if he finished just behind Glenn Irwin, he knew that the championship was done. It got a bit messy at times over towards Druids as he was lifted up slightly, but still he could not rid of his teammate. Glenn Irwin then made another move. We've just lapped. All right, so we've paused it deliberately. This is the last lap of the championship of the third race at Brands Hatch. Tommy, talk us through it. I'm going to talk you through it. Like, let's hit the play button. It's so coming into the last corner. I'm sat in third, and I'm not British champion at this point. But I knew, I just had the confidence. I didn't panic. Look at the crowd there. It's amazing, isn't it? So I had a quick look into turn one with Carl, it, 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 on Carl. Um, but if you look at the rear of the bike here, right as I drop, just a tiny little slide there, it fires the bike to the inside. Funny, because Carl said to me, I knew you were coming by because I could hear your rear, your rear tyre screaming before I even saw you. Um, as soon as I passed Carl, I felt good. I felt confident. Um, you see Glenn looking at the, at the screen there. I bet at that point his bloody guts dropped out thinking, I don't know what he, could, he couldn't do any more to be fair to him. Uh, a good run out of here was crucial. And then obviously then coming down to the back straight, the Ducati's got the horsepower on the on the Yamaha. Could so you hear him? Could you hear Carl? I could I, I knew I knew he was close. I knew he was close. So I defended into to Hawthorne's there. This next corner, I think it's Westfield, this is where I knew Carl had the best opportunity. I was good on the brakes, but look at the speed of that Yam mid corner. And he just runs a curb almost too much. I knew coming up into Sheen Curve there, that was his best opportunity and into this next corner. So I defend a bit. As soon as I come into this corner here, job done. Because the Duke's strong out of that corner and come into the last corner here, I was so good on the brakes. But then I thought, back in the 21, when Tarrant pulled, rode under me there, so I defended quite hard um, and then just tucked in as hard as I could. But yeah, amazing to watch it back, amazing to come over the line and think, oh, job done, finally. I dread to think what you were saying under the helmet. No, I wouldn't swear in that. Oh, I, I, swear I, I guarantee you were. Well, a little bit, maybe, yeah, a little <laughs> bit. But no, it was it was an amazing, amazing sense of relief as well. Amazing sense of achievement and just knew how 
my side and everyone with me it would have been so overwhelmed. So, yeah, no, it's cool. It is, it is brilliant to see. What are you thinking on that warm down lap? What you, what's going through your head there? Could do with a beer. Yeah? Hence, that why, hence what you go and do next. Exactly. <laughs> I, I cycled the track and uh, I said to, I cycled the track with Fraser Rogers and I said, I come up into, into that corner cycling and I said, do you know what? If I win the championship on Sunday, I'm going to stop there and get myself a nice half a pint. So I won't have a pint, but I'll have a nice half a pint. Anyway, I was like, right, as soon as I won the championship, I was like, oh, I tell you what. What made me laugh is one of the lads, I went, I shouted over to him and said, right, get us a beer, get us a beer. Anyway, he's like, runs off. So I stood there waiting, and he comes back and goes, what type do you want? <laughs> I was like, I ain't that bothered, to be honest, I just fancy a beer. So, yeah, it was, it was brilliant, brilliant. That was a good old proper... Rossi style celebration. Was one yeah. yeah. Do you know what? It wasn't impressed. even. Uh, it was quite cliche, really, because you then see Beer Monster as a sponsor. <laughs> um, and most people perhaps would have thought it was staged, but it genuinely wasn't. Wasn't at all. I just thought because Stewie there, the marshal, was actually. A, he's Roger Poultry. He's actually a sponsor of mine. So yeah, he's a, he's a good family friend. It's um, Get him a beer. Get him a beer. yeah. Come on. He fell off the air fence, Did the night, yeah. Pass over to it. It could, it could have been worse though. You could have carried on like Linfoot did. Did he? An extra lap. So it could did have he? Been. Yeah, did you not see that? No. So after the flag, Linfoot went and carried on doing an extra lap flat out because he thought he'd got an extra lap to do. <laughs> so everybody had slowed down. The whole team were out with the championship helmet, the t shirt, and, and everything, and he whizzed past. No. Yeah, and did an extra lap. Yeah, that's close. <laughs> so it could have been awkward, but yeah. yeah, nice. No, it was good. Really good. Bring back nice memories watching that. Yeah, no, it is. It, it brings back memories of um, of what I've achieved, but also what's taken me a lot of sacrifice, a lot of hard work. It's like it's easy to kind of go, "Oh, look at the trophy!" You know, it's it's, it's amazing, but it's it's the years. You know, it's not. It's like I said to, to previously that if if I started superbike in two thousand and seven, let's say, and then I won the British Superbike Championship in two thousand and eight. Yeah, it's brilliant, but it kind of comes, let's say, quite easy. Mm -hmm. Whereas the road I've had to, to sort of go through to get to this point makes that t almost just so much sweeter, you know, makes it makes it so much more worthwhile. And I guess, you know, the most, the, the, the most asked question is, is what what's your motivation now for going forwards? And, and I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure whether I like the idea of, a proper mic dropping, you know, just on the podium with me, with me championship saying, boom, mic drop, I'm done, I'm retired, you know, but I like racing motorbikes too much, um, so I am going to continue uh, to my, to a lot of people's uh, disappointment, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I'm going to continue for definite, and weirdly, uh, the exciting part for me is the, the, the motivation, I wasn't sure, uh, how it would affect me, but the motivation is so strong to defend it, and I never even thought of that. I never even thought, God, you know, where will I get the motivation from? I've done what I wanted to achieve. I've got the trophy, um, but now I'm like, I can't wait to defend it, you know, because I know the look, it, almost going back to like you were saying about what's changed for me this year. But I think this is taking some weight off my shoulders mm -hmm. and gave me even more confidence going forward really so yeah they're they're gonna have to bring their a game for definite in 24. how nice was it to take that up to see you brother yeah brilliant nice moment. amazing yeah kind of hard to even put into words mm. really because for me everyone that follows me closely knows the story and they know why i race and they know how much it is to me um some people follow you on social media let's say and they don't know the real crooks of it but for me, it's just, like I say, I, I made that promise. Uh, it's taken a lot of years for me to be able to go up to the church and say, here we go. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was um, an amazing, amazing time. And, and that's, that's what I do it for, you know. So hopefully I can go up next year with another one and say, yeah, look, we got another one. Another one. <laughs> and a few more, but uh, we'll see. We'll have to cross that bridge when we get to it, hopefully. Prior to Brands Hatch, of course, you, you would have had no idea what feeling like a champion feels like. And therefore, as you just said, you, you don't know what, how you are, would be sort of self-motivated to carry on and to, to defend that title. Mm. What, how, what, we have no idea, and most people out there have no idea what it will feel like to cross that line knowing that you are 
the British champion. Is there any way you can describe it? Are there any words that you've not used yet or, or, or superlatives? That... It's hard, isn't it? Because how do you describe it? It's, it's... And maybe I'm asking for something that's unrealistic. No, but... it, it is. It is. It, 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 I, like I say, it's hard to put it into words. I, I know the feeling and it's, it's hard because in truth, it's not, the, it's not crossing the line for that one race to go, oh, I'm British champion. The, the actual championship starts all the way back at round one at Silverstone. Mm. Um, that's when the championship starts. And just by chance, the championship ends, is it 33 races? Mm -hmm. 33 races down the line, someone has to become British champion. So it's who's done the most work from that race one at Silverstone to that last race at uh, Brands. The, for me, kind of coming away slightly from your question, I learned a lot from going to a few World Superbike races this year. Mm -hmm. And there was a point in, in the season where that actually switched something for me, where I went to World Superbikes, I analysed with Ducati, I was in with Aruba, I analysed everything with them, um, and I come back going, oh, I know what to do. And it's weird, it's really weird. Um, and that's why I went to Aragon as well before um, Donington, mm -hmm. because I wanted to remind myself that, that yes, that is the way. Um, and yeah, it, it was amazing, but, but really going back to your question, crossing the line at Brands just confirms that that race won at Silverstone, first ever, first pole position we had there, um, all through the year, the highs, the lows, the good races, the controversial points, the bad races, um, it's kind of all worth it to come over the line and go, Pah, we're British champion. All that work. Yeah, exactly. Coming back to your point about going to analyse all the data and you, you said you've, you've, you found that feeling or you got that inspiration. Yeah. Was that a, a personal thing for you and the way you ride that bike or is that a setting on the bike? or is Both, that a combination? really. Yeah, both. Both work ethic of, of uh, the Aruba team, um, the way they, the way they analyse, the way they expect X amount from their rider and, and so on and so on. Obviously, my, t my uh, crew chief, Paolo, is obviously from Ducati Corse, so he has what I call the magic laptop with all of the data from Alvaro, from Rinaldi, from Petrucci, from all of the, all of the guys. Um, and it's weird because, you know, we went to Donington and I was doing a few bits wrong. Um, and I was saying, God, I'm really struggling to stop the bike into, let's say, foggies. Um, and... I then look at my brake pressure compared to Petrucci's brake pressure, and I was actually a lot faster into foggies than, than what Petrucci was. I was more brake pressure, but, but rolling in faster. So cool to see all that sort of stuff. Um, because sometimes I'm thinking, oh, you know, am I, am I not performing as I know I want to be? Um, and then you analyse it and think, actually, you know, like for like, I'm not too far away. But yeah, there was some, some things with, with how the riders were approaching their sessions, which, which helped me massively. Um, little bits and pieces that kind of made me roll out and go, uh, I, I would love to do World Superbikes. Unfortunately, the way the World Superbike paddock is slightly is quite difficult because um, I don't want to go and just make the numbers up. My, at my age now, if I was younger, um, it's perhaps slightly different, but at my age... I need to be able to go there and be fighting for top eight straight away. You know, that's, that's what I would want to do anyway. Otherwise, I don't want to do it. Um, so for me, I forgot what I was saying. I did think you were waffling on a bit. <laughs> was I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did think. Yeah, Should so we... basically, yeah, yeah, that's that. Whatever you I was happy. saying. Yeah, you I was just, just happy. happy. Yeah, yeah. I'm always you went happy. to World Superbike races, yeah. you got some details. Job's a good one. Job's a good one. And now British I'm champion. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking we've not had many Tourette shouts just yet. Yeah, no, no, no. Wait it for it. It's building, it's building. <laughs> Do you yeah. want to move on to pots and nuts? Yeah, you can do. I wanted to ask a little bit about the Ducati, actually. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, you're He's jumping the gun, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Sorry, viewers. He can only apologise for <laughs> He's eager. He wants to get home. <laughs> yeah. I've got a four-hour drive. Yeah, yeah. uh, you're obviously experiencing enough on the Ducati, on the Panning IDB4 specifically. Obviously, yeah. this, the bike that you were riding this year is different to the one you've had over the last few years. But Correct. equally, you've had a great deal of success, haven't you? You've yeah. Third and second and now first in the last three years. 
Yeah, it's, it's good, isn't it? Really, when when I feel like exactly like when you say it like that, it's almost like it's very easy to go on British champion mm. now. But mm. actually, in twenty two, um, I had a really tough year in twenty two uh, for a few reasons behind the scenes that made it difficult. But we still went into the last round with a I call a mathematical chance of becoming British champion. Um, obviously, Brad Brad rode great, amazing all year, and obviously deserved to win the championship. Uh, and we ended up third. So third in the British Superbike Championship, no matter what, you know, there's a lot of riders that would give their, their right arm for that. So that was 22. 21, um, me and Taz were your kind of, your, your standout riders is mm-hmm. such, you know, they, but, but Taz was, again, riding with more confidence. Um, he had a, a, better, uh, a better group around him. I refer a little bit to... Uh, so before brands, I had a few um, people, shall we say, that I really respect. Kind of try to say to me, look, you know, ex World Superbike champions, so they know what they're on about. Um, say to me, look, don't stress, do this, do that, job done. Let's say makes it sound easy, um, and it gave me that belief that going. That was actually, really good advice. Wow, well, no, exactly, <laughs> yeah. But it gave me that belief of going. You know, that that's just what I got to do. And I think perhaps in twenty one, Taz is always. You know, I'm not dis- discrediting him because he's a phenomenal little rider and, and great lad. Um, he probably had a better support package to help advise him, where I'm just a one-man band as such. Uh, so I just rolled out. So he probably had a bit more confidence. But yes, yeah, second that year. 2020, I can't even remember where I finished in the championship. It was a tough year, really tough year. It was a short season, wasn't it? They yeah. Just back season, but they did... My, I, think, I don't know, wherever it was, miles back. But that was tough. I struggled with a bike, a lot of really bad chatter. But then 2019, we were third. We were always on, in 2019, obviously, it was the launch of the V4R. Mm. Um, bike was unbelievable. Won 27 races out of, I think, 33 or whatever. Um, between Scott, Josh and, and me, I only won one, I think. But um, one's better than none, isn't it? So, uh, Is that where you cleared up at Alton? Where you... No, that was actually 20, I think that was 21 when I cleaned up, cleared off. But... Yeah, 19, again, we're third in the championship. So in, in the past, however many years, we finished third. I think bad it was year third, seventh, tw- second, third, first. Was it? I yeah. Think. So so again, like consistency, bloody safe set of hands, isn't I, for right. any manufacturer. Safe, safe hmm. Price is going up. Price <laughs> is going up. <laughs> yeah. So no, it's... um. But yeah, going back to the V4R, from 22 to 23, if we talk a little bit on spec of the bike... Not dramatically different, but quite a bit different, as weird as it is to say. Um, different tank, which then basically was a slightly different subframe, which again then puts the rider position slightly different, which then changes the centre of gravity. Um, before you know it, the centre of gravity of the bike transforms the way the bike reacts by a very small amount, uh, a slightly different swing arm. So before you know it, it's not, if you had the material, if you had the parts in your hand and you went, oh, there's one tank, 22 tank to the 23 tank, it's not that different. Mm. The centre of the gravity of the bike is just so crucial now that that's the key part Mm. of it, you know. So, yeah, it's a bit more technical and even I don't understand it fully um, and you could talk hours about it, but that made a big difference. And having Paolo as my crew chief was, was amazing, you know, really great guy calm relaxed and worked really well for me because I'm not believe it or not not that hot-headed anymore I used to be a nightmare in the garage I, I, I used to be terrible but I'm really good now because I know that it benefits no one so mm-hmm. for me uh, he was was a big key point of kind of always being calm relaxed doing our job but referring back to world superbikes when I a- adopted that technique and that that ethic helped again another big step so yes um it's been a it's been a good good road good road to to success for for the this season we're going to move on to hot not in a minute um because he's eager no, no, we're going to, well we're going to talk about you know, tom is really his view on on, on who had a good season who had a not so good season and and no one know. bar me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Justin. hot or not shall hot we or, hot or not <laughs> let's move on how do you want to play this? So, should we should we run through the, the sort of the, the the guys and gals who impressed you the most this year? Uh, yeah. 
Have you got anyone in mind who you're thinking, wow, they did a really good job? Well, then yourself. Yeah. yeah. Right. Are we uh, saying super bikes or? Yeah, yeah. just yeah. in super okay. bikes. But, but not necessarily those who finished really high up. It no. might be someone who finished a little bit lower down, but who impressed you over, a, you know, as they matured during the season or, or got used to the machine or whatever it may yeah. be. Um, yeah. Can I start with you one? You start. If I, so the, the, the name Lee Jackson. Yeah. Mainly because I, and I'm going to go on about it every single episode of this show, but he scored in every mm-hmm. round. Did he? I mean, that yeah. is yeah. phenomenal, yeah. right? Good, safe set of hands, really, Lee. Um, yeah, exactly, yeah. It, Lee's probably a little bit underrated, and I think Lee's weakness is, again, it's very easy to say, but Lee's weakness is probably self-confidence. He has the ability mm-hmm. as a rider, he has the capability, and you see that when... When the race plans out for him, when it comes down to, let's say, raw speed, he has the speed. You know, he has the speed. But sometimes if he's mired back in the pack, he stays there, you know, and he needs to get his elbows out and, and push himself through. And it's, it's, it sounds easier said than done, but it's, it's doable. You know, I come from last at Donington to lead the race uh, within 10 laps, so it's doable. Um, but it, he needs to believe in himself a bit more uh, and then I think it would be a big difference for him. Have you got one? Yeah, I, I think Ido this year. Probably the biggest, one of the biggest knots for me. Yeah. I thought he was going to do a lot better, a lot better. Jumping back onto a Ducati, you'll know better than I do, but yeah. jumping on back onto a Ducati, into that team, which as you know is a good team. Yes. Um, all the sole focus is around him. He's yeah. like shown flashes of brilliance, but yeah. I was just expecting a bit more from last, Christian. Yeah, last year, couple of rounds. You're ruthless. No, I, I, <laughs> no, I, I would say this to him as well, yeah. to be fair. I, mean, I yeah, think no, he would I'm agree. Joking. No, I think, I think on the Ido side, um, if you said to me, are you surprised that he... Sh- I say struggle, because it's probably not the correct word, because he wasn't a million miles away. No, he wasn't. Um, he was there or thereabouts, but just not there. Yeah. Uh, he... he I think he Done as I expected. He just, yeah, he described weirdly. himself as Cress. What's that? You know, like water Cress. Yeah. So they're like, if you put Cress in an egg mayo sandwich, yeah. even Cress, he's like, you don't really need it there, but it's it's there. Oh, it's <laughs> that's what that's how he described himself. I think he did as I expected because uh, loving the bits. Wolf is is a great guy, but he's a he's a funny character, um, and he and he's, he can be difficult to work with. So can I. So I know I'm not dif- I'm not you know, pointing fingers, but um, he can be difficult to work with. And I think, I don't know Christian, but sometimes he strikes me, he looks quite sad and maybe he needs an arm around him to kind of get that belief. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, <laughs> I wouldn't be sure that you perhaps get that there. Um, and the problem is for Christian, going back like you're saying with, with my path of the success, let's say from finishing in the championship, he had some, he had boots to fill and it's never easy. It's a little bit like I refer to going, right, I'm going to join PBM after Scott yeah. Redding and Brooksy won 27 races out of yeah. whatever. I've got some big boots to fill. So if I don't win 28 races out of the 33, mm-hmm. I, it's a disappointment. So it was, t- it was always going to be tough for him. And unfortunately, I, th- I, I knew, I knew the limitations of the bike when I rode it in 22, which made it difficult for me. Um, and they they kept this exactly the same bike, you know. They they didn't they didn't have the new like we were saying about the tank and stuff. They didn't have that, so it made it probably even harder for him. Because then you can argue where well, you got the other two Ducatis always mm-hmm. at the front, but but in in Christian's defence, his bike wasn't as good as ours. Um, so when he was near us, he was riding better than us in in truth. So, but yeah. So that's your or not. That's my. Come on then, who's your? Uh, yeah. who's Have you your got hot though or not? Uh, me? Or it, yeah. well, you're the hot one for me. <laughs> not in that sense. But, <laughs> but I would say so, yeah, because, you know, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't put you down as title favourite this right, year. Right, get out of my house now. I put, <laughs> I put Brooksy down as title favourite. Did you? Mm. Let's talk about Brooksy. Yes. How about that? Mm. And yeah, the FHO that team. Was, oh, until TT, he was great, I thought. I thought he was. he was pushing you, you and Glenn. Yeah. He was really challenging. And then yeah. after TT, it just fell away. Quite I heard it was down to engines. I don't know whether I'm right or wrong saying that, um, but I heard that the bike was rideable and then the BMW gave them this new engine or something um, and apparently it made the bike unrideable. I don't know. That's just what I hear is rumours around the paddock. Um, 
the argument is, is well, put the old engine back in, but I don't know whether because it's the official team they mm -hmm. have to. I, I, like I say, I'm just kind mm -hmm. of guessing. I think it, if I'm going to be honest, I would have probably said it was a... a it, I actually got on well with Brooksy, but mm -hmm. if I'm going to be honest, I would have probably said it was a bit more of a risk to say he's going to be the, the championship threat. Um, but that's yeah, a fair point. Mm. Fair point. I had Jason O'Hanavan down as my title favourite. Yeah, pre understandable, pre understandable, because Jason is a phenomenally mm. talented and fast rider. Where does it go wrong for him? I don't know. You know, it just seems to be a little bit like a roller coaster. One minute he's untouchable and he's just win, 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 and then next minute he's. DNF, 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 and then again, that's what then destroys your championship. Technically, you should have probably won the championship. You went into the showdown, went, was it 100 points ahead one year? Mm -hmm. You think, bloody hell, if you can't win it then, you are doing something wrong. But it it fell apart for him. I think it was, in truth, probably was it when Hickman took him out, and then well, I took him out, yeah. Um, <laughs> And it, and it just went down f downhill for, for him after that, which was a shame because he's a lovely guy, Jason. So, nice to prove you both wrong anyway, you know. Yeah, I'm glad you're Look out. Look at this, mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on then, who's your hot and hot not? Hot and not. Who impressed um, you? Two guys, can I say, I can take two because... Two yeah. You're the champ. Exactly, yeah, I can make new rules. <laughs> um, I am really glad to see Carl have a nice, consistent year. Nice lad, really nice lad. Um, in previous seasons, being a little bit like naturally raw speed, and he's unreal. Uh, in the next three, four rounds, he, he, you wouldn't even know he's even in the race. So for this year, it's some of his weaker circuits. He was still top four, top five. Mm. Um, so Cole did well, and, and I thought it was actually really nice to see Ryan Vickers mm. do well because... It's very easy for all of us to point fingers and go, oh, he doesn't deserve that ride and he doesn't deserve this and da da da. But same as me, I had the roller coaster mm. to get to that to my point. Um, and and Ryan's no different. And eventually, he's got a nice team around him, a nice support package. He's got Roger Marshall helping him. Mm. Um, he's not winning races every weekend, but you you don't need to be at his point at the minute. He done exactly what he should have done. He was consistently there or thereabouts, top four, top four, top five, not far away from his teammate. So yeah, he did well. Because um, he carried an injury, didn't he, into the beginning of the season. Then he missed all the real Was it Stafford or something yeah. he did? Yeah, yeah. Like it was a yeah. hard, difficult mm. injury, yeah. So he, he pretty much wasn't, wasn't competitive in any way for no. the first two rounds, mm. first six races. And, then, yeah. and it was all about confidence building, I guess, Just for him. crept, slowly crept his, his pace up, which was what he should have done. Because if we're going to be honest, in the past, he was a bit of a nightmare for, for being fast and then just always crashing, mm. where he had the odd crash, but no different to anyone else, really. Um, not, let me borrow your bit of paper. Yeah, well, you said you had two, didn't you? Carl being one of them. No, they were No, they were, no, they they were they the hot. Oh, yeah. and, sorry, Carl and Ryan. Yeah. Um, not... It's quite a lot, to be honest. <laughs> Those who <laughs> no. should have done better, yeah. Those who should have done better... Could we argue with Jason um, O'Holloran? But if I was to have to really, really point the finger, uh, it, is, it is difficult. Well, it, right, rather than a not, how about the future? Where, who's who's going to be competitive next year that has sort of shown glimpses of it this year? Um, Danny Kent yeah. on the Yam uh, is an opportunity. I'm going to give you that back because okay. otherwise I'm going to stand there looking at it. Um, Danny Kent potentially did well on the Honda. Um, with his own little team, you know, with his own infrastructure and stuff, was was good. So with the Mar train bike, I know he's got Chris Anderson, who's obviously crew chief, mm -hmm. Taz to to a British Championship. So he's got the data infrastructure. Yep. So so he should be uh, strong next year. Um, be interesting to see how Jason gets on with the Kawasaki, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's announced or if it's even official, but I see Lee Jackson was obviously testing the Honda at the Sunflower for, for build base. Uh, I don't know if he is riding that or not, but but perhaps you know the change for him might do him good. Um, yeah, I think that there's there's potentially you say every we say it at the start of every year really. Mm -hmm. You kind of you almost can't even go off testing times because we went to Navarra at the start of this year. Carl Ride, Jack Kennedy on the Yamaha were. I, I'm sure he was something like two seconds a lap faster than me. Mm -hmm. 
but it goes back to the confidence of I can look at that and go, bloody hell, I've just done a one minute 40, for example, and Kyle Ride is gone around and Jack Kenny would be, we're doing 138s. If we rolled out, if we lined up on that grid for that race, uh, math, technically on paper, they're, they're going to be gone. But I know, weirdly, somehow they wouldn't have gone. Mm. You know, I would have probably still had a good fight. They might have beat me, but I would have been there or thereabouts. So they wouldn't have been two seconds a lap faster. Um, I'm not a big, I, I don't te- push that, that hard in testing. So sometimes when people look at the testing times, it's not completely true. So yeah, that would be my... You never know what people are testing, do they? And they might just be hot on one lap with running a thimble through, full of fuel and so Yeah, exactly. Super sticky tires. Exactly that. Uh, uh, yeah, the, well, I was just going to kind of push on that last question, really. With, with the likes of uh, Max Cook, Charlie Nesbitt, Storm Stacey, the, the, the young'uns coming through, has anyone yeah. caught your eye? Uh, I thought little Max Cook did, did well this year because yeah, yeah. I think uh, from stock 600 before, wasn't he? Mm. So from stock 600 to, to Superbike, it's, it's no mean feat. He had a few crashes, but it's, it's bound to happen. Um, now and again, he showed raw speed where it was like, bloody hell, he can ride a bike. Um, it just, like I say, it, with the right direction from the team is, is what will, will speed that process up. Because sometimes you can see they come in and they just go, what, bam, God, he's got the speed. And then the next year, you know, mm-hmm. it's almost like they go, right, I've done my apprenticeship. Now I'm going to win the championship. Going back to me saying in, if I won it in 2008, it wouldn't have been the same. Um, it's almost like them coming in to SB next year going, right, I've done my apprenticeship. I'm going to win the championship now. And because they have that expectation and that, that uh, pressure on them, and it, it works the opposite. You know, it works the opposite where they go, completely to pot really and, and they probably have a worse year than they did in their rookie year so yeah you just you just never know I think Charlie Nesbitt is again is a, is a good little rider just too many crashes this year if I'm going to be brutally honest a lot of crashes you know um so that he would he would benefit from from coming back a step to to go in two steps forward so I've always looked at it and think god oh, there's so many riders I could so many younger riders that I would enjoy to help that I could go right guys you know do it this way let's take two steps back and we'll take or take one step back and we'll take two steps mm. forward but the, to do that you need to do mm. x y and z yeah. just can't tell them it in a minute when I'm still racing can I <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, don't beat me. exactly yeah sequence. so in a few years maybe do you, ever, do you keep an eye on the other classes the sport classes yeah I, I like to watch you know all of it really the stock, the stock thousands is obviously that say the nearest bikes uh, to, to superbike the only thing with stock thousand at the minute is um you know you've got the billy mcconnell's your dan linfords in in was obviously um uh olsen and these guys they've been in superbike and they've kind of taken a step back to super stock if we were let's say take them out and see the younger up and coming guys you'd say this um that kerr uh he, he seemed to be strong this year that um is it talbot Mm-hmm. Um, Talbot, yeah, yeah, so he he I see he won you know some races in the wet, you know, and he's a young lad. So there is the younger guys coming up. Super Sport again is um, a bit of a tricky one because it's it's a few steps away from Superbike within reason, and then you've got Ben Curry who obviously won that uh, on the on the the, the V Twin. Um, Basically, Superbike. Is it? Is it that good, is it? Yeah, well, yeah, cheating sod then. So, no, but no, Ben done well. He he had a good, strong, consistent year. And then, obviously, uh, that Buffet Moss was in it, you know, missing some rounds. So, yeah, yeah, there's there's some good stepping stones. It's just, at the minute, it just, it seems difficult for the the young, young guys to to really impress, to get that opportunity for the right team in Superbike, I think. Do you think the new classes will help with the Super Teens and the Sport Bike class? That can't be a bad thing, can it? I don't know, really. I don't. I can't see how it can be a negative. Mm. If I'm going to be brutally honest, I'd much sooner see uh, the 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 young classes to allow these young kids because we can't forget racing motorbike is is a very expensive sport. Mm. Um, for the dad and for the dad and lad in their van, you know, you got to think now. What's your what would be? Makes me sound bad saying it, but what would be your yearly? average wage 30 grand nowadays is it would it be i don't know a plumber a builder or whatever it'd be plumbers are probably on 200 grand i spare 
bit like you. <laughs> Royce, I nearly swore that. Um, so let's just say, let's just say you're nine to five, let's say 40 grand, mm -hmm. let's be generous. Um, to then go and spend, you know, people have got mortgages in not just one kids, but wives and all these other things to, to pay for. To then go and spend 20 odd grand on racing a motorbike for their, for mm -hmm. their son is difficult. So all these classes need to be viable. They need to be financially viable to, to be able to allow the kids to do it. Um, I'm gonna be brutally honest, do we really need the BMW cut uh, or whatever it's called with a load of older guys turn around? No, we don't, if I'm gonna be truthful. It's my opinion. We don't need a load of silly old sods turn around wasting track time. Give the kids more track time, you know. Um, it's a bit controversial for you. That's very it? controversial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't ride yeah. a BMW next yeah. year. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think we'll move on. Well, I don't want to ride that BMW. I'm not saying any BMW. You know, but yeah, no, I don't think it's. I know some people love watching it, mm. but um, I think Richard Cooper won every race. But then Richard Cooper, like, say he's been in Superbike, he's been in Super Sport, he's been, mm -hmm. he's been all, everywhere. So I guess he should win. Should win it. Um, but yeah, so that's that. To move on. Let's Just move, move on. on before I dig a bigger hole. I was going to say, you dug yourself a bit. That's all right, I'm too worried. I'm used to it. So we've got five pictures here throughout the year of like key, cool. uh, what I think key. are key moments. Key moments. Okay. So we'll start with number one. Is it on screen? That is on screen. It will be on screen for the viewers. It screen. It's also on screen for you there. Yeah. That is your first test out first in test. Navarra. Crashed it then. Well, there you go then. Yeah. Talk us through it. What were your memories of that first test? Um, jumping two on that seconds brand new... Car ride. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> jumping on that brand Probably new... We're in trouble. <laughs> jumping on that new bike, working with the new team, um, when you got Paul Bird kind of looking down, you know, as such, that extra pressure. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, just jumping on that new bike, the new tank, the way the bike felt was, poor oh, this... The Ducati previously felt quite a wide, bigger bike. Mm -hmm. Jumping on that felt this little, nimble, beautiful race pedigree thing. Um, and it was like, it turned better and it stopped easier. And it was like, oh yeah. Everything previously I was like, oh, we're, we're weak in these areas. It was almost like, Ducati didn't perhaps listen to me, but it's almost like your Bautistas in the factory are saying, right, we're weak in these areas, let's fix it. So when I rolled out on it, it was like, Oh, perfect. You know, um, we we'll have, we'll have a great season with this bike. Next one then. That Next is one. Alton Park. Yeah, over that's over Clay Hill, is it? Clay oh, no, Hill. Is it, is it, uh, yeah, it's coming over it, yeah. onto the start finish line. Oh, Obviously. it's not Clay Hill then. Dear Leap. Dear, Dear Leap, 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 there you go. All right, See, then. you're riding it, so you should I wouldn't know even say is. that's Dear Leap, you know, because there isn't like that metal it. fencing in the background at Dear Leap, is there? I, I anyway, we could argue about it. What are your memories of that weekend? Obviously, that's the first Alton Park, so first one in the season. Um, expectation was higher, frustratingly, because I've, I've always been fast at Alton Park. Mm -hmm. I've won my most races at Alton Park. Uh, my, what jumps out at me is Paul saying to me, Paul Bird saying to me, uh, there's, no, there's no expectations this weekend. And I'm thinking, hey. And he said, there's no expectations this weekend because... Uh, we know how fast you are here. You know how fast you are here. But do not allow that to to put pressure on mm. you. And it, and it did because the first race, I was tense on the bike. Uh, I, from what I remember, qualifying was patchy. I qualified further back. I pulled all the way through the pack to get into like fourth or fifth, I think, maybe. Um, and I was stressed about it because I expected and wanted to go to Alton and go win, win, win. Um but it was it was actually tough. So to get the win in the second race, I think it was, uh, was was like a bit of a weight off my shoulders. But then we ended up struggling in the last race because we went the wrong way electronically. So it was one of them weekends where I expected to to be super fast, super strong. And yes, we got the first win, but it was probably more of a disappointing we weekend than I almost anticipated. Really. Next one then. That one. The triple. The triple. Great. First time you ever did a triple at BSB. Yeah, it was. It was a nice weekend, that wasn't it? It was good, yeah, because to be honest, to do the triple in BSB is so difficult. So difficult. Um, so to actually get it done, I always refer it to poker 
qualifying is qualifying, one lap speed is very different to race pace. I knew exactly what my package had for one lap, for 20 laps, for five laps, for 10 laps, for eight laps, whatever it was. So any scenario, any situation I, I was ready for, um, I had a bit of a, 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 an extra, I don't know, bit between my teeth because I wanted to go out and win. Mm -hmm. um, got the first win, but I, like I say, I refer it to poker because it's like you show your hand. As soon as you kind of go, right, God, he's won that because he come, he sat there patiently and then he come through. Right, we know what he's going to do the next race. So you almost have to change your, your approach. Slightly the race has helped me because the first race was red flagged, put down to eight laps. For four laps, I was there. I got to the front and then just thought, right, now I'm going to go pulled away. Next race, um, won it in a different fashion. And then the last race was last lap outbreak and maneuvers defending ding dong you know and got the one got the win that way so every race for me was quite a different race but yeah nice amazing feeling to get the triple so this is the next one then four out of five this one yeah we i proper struggled between two pictures for this one so we have we had one photo that has mm. not seen the light of day whoa and that was you putting your middle finger up to race direction at Alton park well, the next one you was... You should have brought that up. Well, the next <laughs> one is this one. It's a little bit out of... Because I've not downloaded them properly. Yeah. But this one is Donington Park. Ooh. Moments before the carnage that ensued. Just what, they got to turn it in on? Yeah, <laughs> if you want to say that. The first race on the Sunday at Donington Park. Just Great race. Yeah, it was a great Actually, race. Actually, genuinely a very it good was. race. Uh, obviously... For the first ten laps. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> wrong wrong tyre choice on Saturday. Uh, which basically then um, put me dead last on the grid, um, which was fine, you know, that's that. I sat on the grid thinking, what can I do from here? Glenn was uh, 12th on the grid. Um, I knew we, the championship was getting to a point where it was like, mm -hmm. you know, we have to be really on the ball here. Um, so I knew I couldn't lose really any points. So I had to somehow just more so damage limitation. Didn't expect to win the race in some degree, but if I could get up to, let's just say Glenn won the race and I could get up to fifth or sixth, it, it minimises the damage. So to get up to first within 10 laps, if I'm going to be 100% honest, I did have a little chuckle to myself over the line because I actually laughed out loud thinking, how have I actually managed to do that? Either I'm some superhero or these guys are... Uh, uh, not riding to what they mm -hmm. should be, you know, um, and, and that was the truth, you know, that the truth of it was, yes, it was, it was sprinkling with a few drop, drops of rain, but nothing, nothing at all. Um, I carried on lapping at my pace, got to the front. As soon as I passed Glenn, he passed me straight away back into turn one. And then coming to the hot top Hollywood, top Hollywood is basically coming down through Crane, mm -hmm. 130 mile an hour, right, left, coming down through at the top of Hollywood and just, Bang, he snapped the throttle shut. But because I was so close behind him, I nearly hit him. Nearly, so dangerous. Um, luckily, I was a tiny bit wider. That I was able to almost pick the bike up and run a bit wide. So then I kind of thought, oh, that's a bit silly. Right, okay, if that's the tactic. Um, need a bit cautious here. And then coming up through into McLean's, he would snap the throttle shut aggressively again. Um, and it kind of con uh, concertina mm -hmm. the whole pack a bit. Uh, and then Cole come past me. Um, but honestly, there was minimal panic because I thought I've got nine, eight, nine laps left to win this race. I've come from last to first in 10. So where's the panic? There is no panic. There's no panic at all. Sat there, Glenn, uh, Carl passed. He come down into foggies. I sat in third thinking, oh, this is cool. I'm just going to tick the laps. I'm going to sit here now. I'm just going to tick the laps off. And when the time's right, I'm just going to put the hammer down get to the front and check out, you know, just go back to how I was riding. Mm -hmm. Glenn, Cole passed Glenn through Foggy's, fantastic move, so, so much faster. Um, and then Glenn's elbows and arms and bodies going everywhere and kind of the bikes are going everywhere. Um, Cole was inside. Uh, Glenn was, you, you can see it, it's not just me, but Glenn was kind of looking to his right like this. Um, I went into that corner two kilometers an hour slower than I did every other lap in that race. Uh, I went in a bit, uh, uh, you know, hard on the brakes. The rear just picked up a little bit. 
it was basically a split decision if I'm going to T-bone car ride and probably break his leg, mm -hmm. you know, seriously injure him, yeah. or there was a tiny little gap to try and get through. The problem is, is that gap was designed for a smart car and I was in an Arctic lorry. <laughs> so somehow I had to try and get an Arctic through that gap and it is just not, not going to happen. And I, I caught, just by chance, I caught Glenn's rear wheel. Um, and that was probably the spiral of, of many events to, to lead on, if I'm going to be truthful. Well, we'll lead then to the main event then. Yeah. That one. <laughs> what a photo, viewers, eh? <laughs> um, Talk about being on there on your own. Yeah, amazing. Putting it's weird. Fingers up to the sky. Yeah, everywhere. just exactly that. Just you see, when you look at the photo, I, I, I love it because the gold helmet, um, I'm on my own. You've got the number one mm -hmm. uh, in the background at the bottom there, and it kind of just goes through all of the, like I just said about Donington, controversial. I'm in the right, I'm in the wrong. Viewers disagree, viewers agree. There's so many opinions. Um, but all of that is wiped, wiped clean because I don't care, you know. I, I got what I wanted to achieve. Um, I've done it for my own reasons and the feeling was... The feeling was no one can take this away from me. Mm. Um, you can't protest, you can't say he's an unfair winner, you can't whatever. Uh, I was a deserved winner. I won it fair and square. I won it through hard work, through years of determination through years of hard graft, um, and that feeling was like, I've done it, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Thanking you. Shall we take a quick break? Yeah, right. Because we've got questions from the public, to come, and my phone's over there with all the questions on, so. Take a break, then. Let's take a quick, quick break. <clears throat> Go on, mate. You've got you've got some questions got, from the public. Questions from the public. Public questions. Public questions. So we put a, we've got a little closed Facebook group um, for people to join, which is Bennett's Bike Social. So if you want to join it, just feel free. Head on over, and we'll accept you. Um, so we've got some questions. They might not though. Well, no, well no, it depends on whether if we like you or not. <laughs> um, so the first question is from a, a gent called Mark Betts. Really nice gent, actually. He's a guy who rides a Hayabusa. Um, however, he's paralysed, oh. so it's really quite cool. Yeah. Um, he said, can you ask him what he thinks made the difference between this year, uh, winning the title and previous years from uh, where he's come so close? Yeah. Is it bike, team, teammate? I'm guessing that's obviously <coughs> the drive for a teammate. Yeah. Um, and second question from him, how many more sheeps have you bought with the prize money? <laughs> <laughs> Three geese, actually, instead. Um, I, the first question would be the the like we've said sort of previously in the show would be bike spec um bike spec my crew chief from Ducati course um and yes obviously having a, a teammate a fast strong teammate does extra motivate you and drive you for for, for definite so so that's probably the biggest difference uh, them them bits um and yeah like I say no 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 more sheep uh, just geese but anyway, they, they, I got them for free, so actually, yeah. <laughs> so you didn't win. really buy them then? No, exactly, win-win. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't, no. Because I don't know which, there's two girl geese and one man geese, but I don't know which one's which. <laughs> they all look the same. So yeah, I can't, can't start calling the girl sheep like goose. a man's name, can I? Yeah, <laughs> goose, yeah. Do it one, you're the champ. Exactly. <laughs> the uh, champ so the next one is from uh, Skilled Biker. Did you drink all the champers out of the trophy? No, I actually ended up pouring half of it down my back. Yeah, you did, didn't you? I tried. The 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 thought was there, but no, I was, um, yeah, I got. I, I actually drank more from my boot than I did from the trophy. <laughs> uh, Sarah has asked, uh, are all the four names under the sheep on your merch their real names? Yeah, Rosie, Dora, Taylor, and Phoebe. As long as that's on the t-shirt, it should be, yeah. It should be, yeah. So. I'm a bit gutted, really. I was hoping to see the sheep. I don't know. They're, out, they're about somewhere. They knew you were coming. They yeah, ran off a bit. Right off. Off. <laughs> yeah, they were like, go on, sad that. Uh, the next one is from Ian Chamberlain. It's not really a question. It's just says, nothing really to ask him other than giving him our congratulations on a great win uh, and a superb racing season. Oh, thank you, Ian. Oh, Muchly yeah. appreciated. Uh, the last one, then, is from Harry White, who did used to work at Bennett's. Um, he's asked, if you could go back to an era of racing and race within it, which one would he go to? Um, 
if we were to if we were to say let's say um, narrow it down to BSB because you can go off oh, 500 Grand Prix or whatever um, if we were to narrow it back down to BSB the era that I I suppose just when I was growing up you know your Steve Hislop days your John Reynolds is um, your Walkers your Hodgson's all these guys I used to just oh, love watching um, but yeah I would probably say if it was the BSB sort of question then that era seemed a little bit less um, easy to upset <laughs> to upset people, shall we say? Uh, and I'd have probably fitted in a bit better then. Yeah. Question from me though. Only one. Who has been like when your phone's gone off with messages of congratulations? Who's been the one where you've gone? Oh, flipping egg! I've got a question. I've got a congratulations from this person. Um, Good question. Tough one, really, because I know it sounds bad to say. Which is a, is is so appreciated, but I've had that many um, messages through social medias, through texts, through through everyone that it's it's nearly impossible to kind of pinpoint just one because sometimes I'll end up flicking through my phone and think, oh, I feel bad because um, you know he's messaged me or something, and he's ex champion, mm -hmm. and he's this and that and so on, but. Difficult, difficult one to answer. No, let's let's say no, no A-listers like you know, no um, Nicole Schurzwinger. Yeah. No, no, no. none of them or whatever. No. Um, but yeah, I think racing, the racing community, let's say, is quite a niche thing. But I, I think I've been more so amazed of having uh, you know congratulations from probably people outside of the racing. You know, but then it's still motocross, like world motocross champions and stuff like that. It's, it's been cool. So it's hard one to answer in truth. I was hoping you were going to say like Pecco or Mark Marquez or. Something. Well, that would have been nice, but no, I've blocked them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, have, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't. No, no, we're only some little BSB riders. They don't. I don't congratulate them to be honest. So I can imagine you got some nice ones from Ducati though. Like yeah, Paolo, of course. Chibati yeah, Chibati, like yeah, yeah, Chibati. Yeah, yeah, Chibati. Straight away on the on the text message. Uh, Serafino from Aruba, you know, all these guys, Neil Hodgson's, World Champions, mm -hmm. all, all of these guys, Foggy, um, but I know it sounds bad, but because it's the community that I can chat to willingly, um, a lot of people will be like, bloody hell, Foggy or Hodgson or, you know, Chibati, but <clears throat> I can message Chibati, you know, is is just in a general chat, which is, is lovely because he's, he's a lo lovely guy. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, from probably the, the the fan side of it, you'd be like, God, you know, he's a celebrity. So, yeah. I'd certainly say Paul Hollywood. Oh, yeah, Paul. Yeah, no, he did. Yeah. So that's what, that's what I'm, I'm used to tonight, really. But yeah. Paul was actually at um, Brands, wasn't yeah, he, with yeah. us? And I was saying to stay. So what a lovely... It's weird because he's such a bike fanatic. And we were chatting away at Brands Arch for ages of just nonsense you know the, the conversation was so easy he's such a lovely bloke that uh we we're chatting about bikes we we're chatting about life we we're chatting about that and he's the sort of guy that i could sit down and just chin wag away with um but i suppose like for him if he walks down the street past a cake shop everyone's hey come on here I'll taste our cake see what you think <laughs> but no he's a good really good egg really good egg so we talked earlier on about 2024. When do you think you will have made a decision, or when can when when, we, when can we expect an announcement? Depends when this is getting put out. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'll tell you what, how about this then. Let's rephrase that. Are you going to be at Motorcycle Live, and will you know by then? Yes, I'll be at Motorcycle Live, and I will know by then. We are. Uh, can I say the date? Day on not the date. I don't even know the date. But we're filming this on Thursday. You can, you yeah, can yeah. say the date. You're Thursday, filming Thursday, this on 26th. Thursday the twenty sixth. Thursday the twenty sixth. We the day are, before you go to Florida. Yeah, day before yeah. you go to Florida on holiday. Um, we I sh will know a lot lot clearer direction either by the end of today mm. or tomorrow. Um, really tomorrow in truth because I said to myself Friday. The, what was the date? It's 26th, 27th. Yeah, so 27th. 27th, Friday the 27th, I'll, I'll make a, a verbal agreement. Um, and I'm very old school that if I make the verbal agreement, then that's legally binding to me. Um, so I hope that is the case, that I can stick to making that decision tomorrow. And then I will be at the Motorcycle Live show with... Uh, and your new gear. New gear might be my existing gear. It might be... be 
no gear, I don't yeah. know. Might, no one might not want me anymore, I don't know. So, um, yeah, I'll run my own team then. Jolly good. So we will also see you at Motorcycle Life. I hope you'll come and see us. We've got a stand. We've got a Bennett stand. Actually, it's part of the BSB stand, uh, which is right next to the stage in Hall. Don't know, but mm -hmm. it's where the big stage is. Uh, so, you know, Tommy might be there. Yeah, I'll, I'll be sure there. We'll be with a pen or a Sharpie yeah. or a, uh, ready for selfies. Um, 100%. And we will be there as well. So if you're, uh, and our bike social members, of course, get all sorts of discounts and benefits and, and all sorts of good stuff. So if you are not yet a bike social member, then why not? you get it free with your Bennett's insurance policy, or you can pay six pounds a month or 60 pounds a year. Have I missed anything out? I don't think so. I Good. think we covered everything. Oh, that's all right then. I think the only thing maybe to mention is just that we are gonna do those discount booklets again like we did last year mm. at the NEC. So if you do, if you are, like I say, a Bike Social member, then literally just bob along to the Bennett's uh, BSB stand. We'll have a little uh, booklets for you. Just show us your membership number, uh, and then you get um, additional discounts at the show. Perfect. Thank you, sir. No, my pleasure. Thank you for, for making the trip, the four-hour trip down. It's all right. It's my pleasure. I was sat in the car this morning thinking, why have I got up at quarter to five? Wow. And then I thought, That's well, it, look it. at the it's content. All, it's all worth it for you, isn't exactly it? Exactly that. Worth it for you. Exactly so, that. No, no my thank pleasure. Thank you very much for having us. We appreciate it massively. Anytime. And, um, and enjoy your holiday to Florida. Yeah, what's thank your, you. What's going to be the first ride that you're going to go on? Wow, well, my wife's Disney obsessed, isn't she? So I get, I get told where I'm going <laughs> and what I'm doing, in all honesty. So... Um, yeah, I'll, uh, it's, shit, it's more, I say it's more for it, so for her, it'd be nice to have a break, but um, I like the Tower of Terror, actually. I, I hated that. Yeah, yeah, because your guts just drop out. Like, it's, it's like, I don't mind it going up, it's when the it's when the, the screen opens up and you can see all over Florida. Yeah, That's yeah, when I feel Yeah, because I hate heights. Yeah, so. yeah. No, we'll see, so I'm sure we'll have a, just a nice, nice to have a break. Look, uh, not going to go on it, really, but... People don't realise the sacrifice mm -hmm. in racing for me, but also for my family mm -hmm. and for my wife. So if she wants to go to Florida for two weeks and meet Mickey Mouse for the hundredth time, <laughs> then then she can do that. So yeah, as long as as long as she has a good time, that's all that matters. And the championship bonus is paid for it as well. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's let's get it first. <laughs> no, thank good. you very much. Thank you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. See you next season, in fact. <laughs>